Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we have a very, very special treat for you. And I know that this is going to impact a lot of you guys where you're at, because um, let's just say that we're what, what I got. I got to stop. OK, we're dealing with a guy who knows what's what. This is Pat Militich. He has been around everything from, you know, starting basically MMA from its gra grassroots kickboxing champion, been on Joe Rogan, been all over the map. But the thing is this, why is it going to impact everybody? Why am I excited about this? Because it is going to impact everybody. And that is dealing with nutrition. And you, Pat, have been getting, you know, well, your hands dirty, ha ha ha, uh, on what is causing a lot of people's ailments and how to fix them. And so I am, I am, my mind is backing up because I want to ask you a million questions, but please start the interview by telling people who you are and we'll we'll dig in so to speak well i appreciate it brad and thank you for having me on i mean this is like i said when my sister found out i was going to be on here she she does you wouldn't believe all the stuff she does she is canning stuff constantly <laughs> she is uh using dehydrators and uh the basement's full of all kinds of you know i'm not going to say her address because she's she's <laughs> loving, but you know but she goes oh my gosh i follow i love that that whole YouTube channel. I love you. So you got a huge fan in my sister. So that's very cool. Rock but, and roll. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But, you know, really obviously for me, starting in Iowa, uh, both sides of my family were, you know, in the agriculture industry, farmers um, on my father and mother's side, uh, coal miners as well, you know, so blue collar uh, agriculture people who, who busted their tails. So I care a lot about the farming and uh, agriculture and quality of food and things. And that I, my journey has taken me through, you know, this blockhead of mine took a lot of years to kind of have revelations about what was really going wrong with mankind and, and everything else that was going on. So through my athletic career, from the time I was in probably sixth grade, I'm saying, I started getting exposed to supplements. And there was an old product called MLO protein powder. I was in the 70s and uh, you know, other, other different products that my father would kind of check out for his football teams and you know stuff like that so anyway i was exposed to supplementation early on uh, but throughout my i guess really once i became a professional athlete, professional boxer and then competitive professional mixed martial artist that's when i really dialed in and started searching for what made mankind tick what what made us perform at superhuman levels what allowed us to recover you know because the the training for combat sports, especially at that level, is is extremely intense. There are a lot of injuries. Um, you you get you know, you're roughed up. You're roughed up. You're exhausted. You're depleted, and so you've got to be able to come back the next day and hit it just as hard. And it was during my professional kickboxing days that I really stumbled upon, I think the the the, the mind opening uh, substance for me. And it was a, a product that was every antioxidant known to man. It was all organic. And it healed my respiratory system. So I had black mold damage to my respiratory system. And I, I suffered from endurance problems my entire athletic career. So now all of a sudden I went from sparring three rounds in boxing with, you know, really, really high level boxers to all of a sudden I'm doing 10 rounds in one week and I can breathe and I'm not fatigued and I'm recovering and I'm doing endurance things that I never dreamed of being able to do. And it was because of that one, that one product. So I changed my view on on everything really and i started realizing that organics was where it was at and i continued to search and i got my athletes on these products and we had 12 world champions and 95 televised athletes we were able to uh, produce some of the greatest fighters in history and do some great things and i would also share that knowledge with law enforcement with high level military that i worked with uh, because i wanted everybody to to experience the high levels of endurance and, and human existence so to speak uh, of what i was experiencing but it wasn't wasn't until i finally got to you know it was right around the start of the the uh, covid situation was where i discovered what i consider the holy grail of substances and it is uh, it exists 50 feet below the most nutrient rich bog in canada uh, the gentleman that found this is a nutrient expert he searched and searched and searched for six years, I believe, 
until he found um, this one location. And uh, so it's all the chemic acids. And I'd never seen one substance by itself um, allow for people to have relief of inflammation and a lot of the health benefits of, of a product before in my life. I mean, and I've, I've, I've been approached by hundreds of companies with different supplements and products and things like that. And I got to the point where I could look at the back of a, of a, of a package and look at the ingredients and go, I'm not going to put this in my body, right? So it's, it's been a, a journey of realizing that also in my research, Senate document 264, for instance, which you know about, and that was 85 years ago when scientists and doctors testified in front of a Senate subcommittee that our soil was so depleted of nutrients that that was responsible for the explosion in uh, Americans becoming diseased and sick and, and things like that. So that really took me even deeper. And when you when you really dig into it, obviously, it is, it is literally leaving us uh, almost helpless, defenseless against inflammation and disease and, and a lot of other issues, the gut bacteria being destroyed, things like that. And, uh, and then you start digging into billions of pounds of petroleum-based fertilizers that are dumped on our soil and the glyphosates on the crops and the processed food chemicals. And, the, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. We can't expect uh, mankind to be healthy with all of this stuff going on. And unless we, unless we really, we have to acknowledge the problem to correct it, right? Absolutely. So I, that, I went a million different directions, but that's kind of sums up, you know, where I'm at over 35 years of searching for what really can, can help mankind the most. And that's organics, 100%. Well, it seems to me that this is, should be basic, you know, obvious common sense stuff that, uh, I mean, even I, I was just talking with my wife the other day about how the fact that, you know, when I bite into an apple or an orange that you get from the store, they just don't taste like they do when I remember when I was a kid. And, and it makes sense too, because you can see that the nutrient content in them is much, much lower. The flavor is not there. And well, that has to be happening somehow. So, I mean, these oranges are growing up from whatever the tree is sucking up from the ground. So it just makes sense to me that whatever it is that it is sucking up is not what it used to be. And, <laughs> and so it makes sense that that's got to be the fix. Right. And, you know, when I was down in, um, I was down South and we were talking to some folks about they had very acidic soil from the coal industry. The coal industry had destroyed their soil, very acidic, and it's dead. It's, it's, dead. it's rocks and it's sand, basically. And they are planting orchards, um, you know, because the coal industry has died in that region uh, since 2008. And they're trying to revitalize the, you know, the economy down there and do a lot of great things. And they're all great people. But they said that they are taking advice from apple farmers in Michigan to use NPK fertilizers and this. And I said, you know what? You have dead soil. It's very acidic. Um, you're putting petroleum-based nitrogens and other products into the soil. It'll grow trees and it'll grow apples, but your apple, it cannot be said that phrase an apple a day keeps the doctor away because you're gonna have so little real nutrients in those apples that they're worthless, technically. It's filling up a belly. That's all you're doing. Um, and trying to get them to understand that, you know, there are substances, organic substances out there that can be put in that soil to start breaking down the nutrients, to make it bioavailable, to, you know, uh, you know to oxygenate it and to bring that soil back to life uh, with compost, with manure, with other products, you know, that, that we're using. And they're starting to come around. They're starting to come around. And a lot of conventional farmers are starting to come around as well. And understanding that we've got to do something pretty fast because we're reaching we're reaching critical mass for mankind's health because of the soil and what it's doing to our food. So now this this place that um, you, you mentioned that the uh, the Canadian guy uh, what was his name you didn't I don't think you mentioned his name. He just stays in the background. He won't, okay. He doesn't want to be a front guy. He doesn't want to be anything. He is he's just an expert that's traveled the world testing soil and that's okay. all. Okay. Man, that is completely fine. I, I just wanted to give him, him due respect 
and you, you should I, I have said since I met him and discovered and and um, fully understood the benefits of you know having the plant-based organic nutrients the 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 organic minerals and substances that are bonded with carbon that go into the human body and are actually used or in a cow's body or a chicken's body or anything. Um, he should have won a Nobel Prize for this. It is literally um, the one substance that I, I've never seen anything like it after 35 years of searching. Wow. So the basically then you're kind of in a way supplementing the earth. 100%. Uh, this is a sustainable this is a sustainable soil conditioner because the fulvic, the fulvic humic um, concentration, the sediment layer starts at about 50 feet below the bog. And they auger that up out of the ground. They use zero chemicals in the process. Unlike Leonardite, which comes from coal, uh, the fulvic humic, they have to use um, acids, um, chemicals to remove the fulvic humic from the Leonardite. It's not truly organic when it comes out of the ground. Then you add chemicals to it. I don't want to put that in my soil and I certainly wouldn't put it in my body. I wouldn't put it in my livestock's body, but a lot of people do because they're told to, right? Right. So this is organic, truly 100% plant-based and organic, and it comes out of the ground literally alive. So it's, now it's, it uses a patented process, putting it under extreme pressure and cold um, to remove the fulvic humic from the pulp and, and, uh, and that's how how we get the product. Very cool. Now, so my question is is well, my next question is where what kind of plants does this benefit? It benefits everything on the on the planet. That's it that see, because that's that's where I, I was I was wondering, is it gonna just work for vegetables or is it just good for it works for everything? It works for orchards, it works for regular trees, it works for corn, it works for soybeans, it works you name it. Um, the the organic nutrients um, and the microorganisms that are in it, the microorganisms are going to start working in the soil to add more oxygen levels of the soil. Okay. And it's also going to make the nutrients that are in the soil that are not available to the plants, it's going to break them down and help convert them into bioavailable so that the plants can absorb those nutrients even more, right? So people will use uh, conventional fertilizers with this, but way less than they normally would. Therefore, wow. farmers can save massive amounts of money per acre. You do a 5,000 acre farm, a 10,000 acre farm bigger, you know, people are saving huge amounts of money by working towards organic. Right? Wow. So then, then is it, is it the kind of thing that you have to add it every year or are you eventually going to revitalize the soil to the point where you just kind of have a small amount of upkeep? Well, I think it's, I think it's important. There's a combination and I'm no agronomist, obviously. I come from the human side of performance and, and fitness and, and uh, health and everything but the thing is is cover crops are so important in all of this right and yes you know the folks that that understanding giving giving rest to a certain portion of your land you know there's a lot of you know the composting um the manures and when we talk about people will say i use manure and that's awesome but the grain that your cows ate or yep. your hogs ate had all the petroleum-based nitrogens in it. Yep. And so that's what their manure is full of. So what do you really, you know, so you see what I'm saying, but yep. the point is, is that they can use a lot less, but yeah, the composting the manures combined with this and keeping that soil healthy. Absolutely. So, well, what other, what other uses can, can this be used for? Well, it can be refined and it has been refined and it is uh, a benefit livestock. You know, I was just talking to a cattle farmer down in Knoxville, Iowa, and I asked him about his nutritionals and what, what he was giving his cattle. And he mentioned the corporation that he deals with. And he said, I'm quite healthy or quite happy with the products that I use. And I go, well, let me ask you a couple questions. I'm sorry for taking the time, but, you know, what is the source of the minerals and the nutrients in the product you're giving your cattle? What, what source is that? Is that organic or inorganic? And he goes, I don't know. Oh and no! <laughs> well, this is this is something that you should probably probably ask. Um, how does it affect the mitochondria function? Does it does does it help with mitochondrial function? Um, does it does it help with oxygen levels at a cellular level? Does it assist in the digestive process? Does it remove inflammation? 
from your livestock's bodies? Does it help them? Uh, you know, what kind of uh, electrolyte body, you know, electrolyte powers does it have? You know, all of these types of questions and they can go to the representative of that corporation and they can line up and I could rifle fire those questions off to them. And I'm pretty willing to bet that even though he's the expert in their product, he won't have very many answers for me. And that's, and, and he said to me, I said, look, the refined, the refined for human consumption product, this is what I've given my children for years. And my children don't get, they don't get sick. They're, they're the healthiest kids that I've seen in the last three, four years um, because they, of course, had a great diet. Uh, they've been fed well, but the nutrients that they're given, because I'm paying attention, they look, they look so healthy, Brad, that it's, 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 um, it's an amazing blessing. And he said, okay, so the refined product, you give it to your kids. He goes, cows are different than kids. And I said, are they really? I said, we're all organic organisms. We have to have the same nutrients, the same minerals in organic form to sustain life and stay healthy. We have to have it. And that's, you know, the, the thing I'm trying to, and he's looking at me and his employees are standing around and the Knoxville fair girl is there and they're all looking at me like, okay, these are some pretty, pretty serious questions here. I need answers. And I want to ask people those questions. What, where, where does your product come from? Is it from Leonardite? Is it from rocks? Uh, did they have to use harsh chemicals to remove it? Is it truly 100% plant-based and organic? Because if it's not, I'm not putting it in my kid's body. And, you know, let's be honest. I mean, there's certain things that you shouldn't be putting in your field. Um, now, of course, my kids aren't going to eat manure and neither am I. But we have to we have to draw the line somewhere with what we're going to put in the fields, what we're putting in crops, what we're uh, processing food with, you know, the other things that when our health is failing, then we go to so-called experts and we're told to take these certain pills that are more synthetic chemicals. Right. Does this make any sense for organic beings to be doing? It doesn't make any sense. And everybody knows it. There's just a certain number of people that are being paid very well to propagate. Right. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, well, you know, it's the old adage, you are what you eat. <laughs> Literally, let food, thy, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Amen. So tell me about the, what, you know, the solution that you have found that, that you're, you're, you're talking about here, because name names, man, I want, I want people to know about this. Yeah, well, it is a product, um, of course, out of Canada, the product is called Humagenics. And uh, I have exclusive U.S. rights to distribute it in the United uh, in the United States, and they can go to soilsavior.com, and they can order it by the pallet, two thousand pounds of it, or they can order the one point three four pound bag uh, for lawn and garden. And I mean, I've I've had great conversations with. It's it's kind of scary, Brad. It's kind of scary for a guy that comes from the human performance side of things to walk into and hold a conversation with an expert agronomist. And he's looking at me with his head turned sideways going, oh, I don't, I don't necessarily, some of the conversations after looking at it, they say, well, there's arsenic in this and there's silver and there's this. And I go, you know that I told you it's organic, right? And they go, yeah, but I'm still a little concerned. And I go, you understand that's when it's bonded with carbon and usable the beneficial to plants and animals and Americans, even at the highest level, haven't been educated on the difference between a heavy metal and an organic version of it. That's been under carbon, right? And that's, I, it, it blows my mind that expert agronomists don't even know this and botanists and other people that just at certain universities in the agriculture departments, they're just not teaching it. It's all chemical. Well, it's got to be because that's what makes them money. It's lo lobbyists or lobbyists or lobbyists wherever you go, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. But why are they telling us, giving us information that keeps us set? It makes money. It makes money, right? That's the, sad, that's the sad part of it. It's, it's, it makes money. That's, 
that's what it is right now. So, okay. So the, the, the website where we can go to find out more about this, what is the name of that website again, please? Soil, S-O-I-L, soil, savior, Dot com and people can go on there and again order it for it can be applied in furrow um a pound per acre that's what i was going to ask you for like uh if you're an average garden uh you know half acre garden one bag will do you oh easily yeah because all you have to do i mean it can be foil it can be applied foilier uh, spray so you can you can put it in a spray bottle with water and just spray the leaves of your of your vegetable garden Okay. Fruit trees or whatever, and then it'll speed up photosynthesis, uh, drive the root systems deeper. You know, all the all the nutrients from that then end up in your vegetables. So you are getting those organic nutrients then in your vegetables, your fruit. You know, and that that's something. It, there's a lot of different ways to use it, and then again, uh, for livestock, you know, one one teaspoon per gallon of water in your water systems. Um, two pounds per ton of feed. You can use it that way. Um, just mix the powder up in it. So there's a lot of different ways to, to do this when it comes to agriculture. Gotcha. Now, uh, just you, I think you already answered the question pretty clearly, but this is safe for animals. So like, let's say you spray this on your garden, your dog gets out there, dog's not going to get hurt if it, if it starts eating some of your, uh, your, your whatever corn. Whatever. Well, that's, that's a point that I make for people is, you know, I lived in a, a neighborhood where, you know, we got the, the homeowners association. You can't have a portable basketball hoop out in your driveway. <laughs> you, got, you got John Deere executives and doctors and you know, all this stuff. Here I am, a, a former professional fighter and broadcaster living amongst these people and they're freaking out about basketball hoops, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, every, but everybody's using, you know, chem line and they're spraying toxins all over everybody's grass to kill the dandelions. And they stake those signs in your yard and says, you know, for at least 48 hours, don't let little Johnny and Sally run around out here because we don't want them to end up with cancer. Why were we spraying that on our, on, our, on our grass to begin with? Yeah. But this, as a soil conditioner, can be sprayed all over your grass, all over your garden, whatever you want to spray it on, your rose bushes, your hostas, whatever you want to use it on. And yeah, your kids could run around in it barefoot and it's not going to hurt them at all because technically people bathe in this stuff uh, deliberately so that your skin is your largest, largest organ. Whatever goes on your skin, you're going to absorb some of it. You know, that's why we don't use deodorants with aluminum and parabens in them. That's why we don't use sunscreens with that in it. Why we don't use shampoos with that stuff in it and other, other self-care pro uh, uh, product. But your kids could go out in the grass and roll around in it right after it's sprayed. Now they're going to end up, you know, with with uh, it's the darkest, uh, it's the darkest substance on the planet. So your kids are going to get, you know, they're going to come out looking like they got French fried. <laughs> <laughs> but if it soaks in through their skin, it's very beneficial because it's the nutrients their bodies need. So, so you're saying it's a not not in any way similar to say Roundup. <laughs> It is, it is as far to the opposite end of the spectrum exactly. as you could get. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so it is, it's, 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 uh, I've got farmers so excited, Brad, that it, when I went in to speak, and I, I won't say his name right now, but he's probably the most knowledgeable guy that I've been told by many farmers, most knowledgeable uh, farmer and agronomist involved in organic and conventional farming. He's, he's the guy. And when I, when I talked to him, I was terrified because I don't come from the agriculture world, but I know what I know. That's all I can talk about. And I admit to people, I don't know that much about agriculture, but I know we need to fix a lot of things, right? Yep. Yep. And so, and I know how closely related human health, the food and soil are. So it's obvious to see for me. And by the time I got done talking, he actually looked at me and he went, I need you. And I just went, I can't believe he said that. And I said, I need you. He goes, do you realize how many people need to understand what I've been saying for years coming from the soil? Nobody listens to him because he's talking about soil science, right? Right. And, and like me, if, if you know, five years, 10 years ago, a guy like that's talking to me about the soil, I'd go, what? You're speaking French. I don't understand what you're saying. But he said, if you come from it, at it from the human side and can explain 
why it's so important and move your way to the center, to the, to the food, and then get to the soil where the problem, the root of the problem is, and then you introduce me and I come up on stage and then start talking from that side. And then everybody, all the farmers and everybody sees the two pieces come together and then it makes sense for them, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that's why I'm so excited that I, I guarantee you that the, the people that watch this channel are going to be jazzed up about this because we all know that what the problem is. And I would I would wager that most people, most farmers, because we live in the center of Wisconsin and we're we're friends with a lot of farmers and there's farms everywhere. I would wager that most of them, if they had an option that they felt was at least going to do what they already are doing and was an organic choice that was not too much more money or even the same amount of money, they would switch in a heartbeat. And what, and the truth is they can save probably $150 easy per acre. So a thousand acre farm. That's that's <laughs> significant, man. That's $150,000 savings at planting time. Yeah. Times that I then go to a 10,000 acre farm, over a million dollars at planting time, right? Um, and even more now, after talking with farmers in Western Iowa and Western Kentucky, they're spending way more than I even imagined. Um, my, my last research was at probably 300 and some dollars an acre. Yep. They're far above that now. And so... I well, mean, not to mention, you're not waiting on, on the Russian-Ukraine thing to figure out if you're going to get fertilizer. Well, and that's the thing is, look... Um, I can't figure out if the urea situation, the, the NPK fertilizer situation, um, is for the purpose of forcing mankind to go organic, or if it is to cause failures of farms for corporate farming to take over, right? Mm. Look, we've seen that throughout history. We know what Stalin did with farming. It yeah. was government takeover of farming, and then they just didn't farm, right? And they, and they starved a lot of people that way. So to me, um, I want those family farmers to keep their farms. I want them to be profitable. You know, they can use a much smaller percentage of NPK fertilizer and save massive amounts of money and at the same time improve the, the health of their soil and their crops. It's, look, all the way around, it's a winner. Yeah. You know, well, so I, I am I'm I, super jazzed, man. I really am. And I know that people are going to be all over this. So, yeah. I, I'm, and I think that's the thing is think of all the, and I apologize, but think of all the millions and millions and millions of yards across America that puts down chemicals and, and petroleum-based fertilizers and all that. We're contributing to the problem if we're doing that. So just try to stop. Try to stop. Put down organics. Let dandelions grow in your yard. And if your neighbor goes, hey, man, you got to control your weeds, go, those are actually medicinal. Yeah, we we've had uh, plenty of dandelion salads. We don't we don't pick them here. We don't we don't poison them here. Good man, good man. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. the thing is, everyone's got to be educated about this. Amen. All right. So before we say goodbye, uh, Pat, please give the information one more time. I know we've done it a few times, but I I, I want to make sure people can write it down and go and look it up because. This is the kind of thing, you know, uh, we, we always talk about, but be the change. You've got to be sure. the change. And if you can do something and it's going to cost you even less than you're already doing and it's going to do better, uh, it seems a no-brainer to me. So please yeah. do give the info again. Sure. Uh, Soilsavior.com. Soil, S-O-I-L. Soilsavior.com. They can order retail for their lawn and garden, which is a 1.3-pound bag. Or they can use, uh, they can buy, you know, entire pallets, one ton, uh, for farming operation. If they contact me, uh, they, can, they can contact me through that email on there or my phone number on that website. I'll be glad to put them in contact with my friend, who is the professional agronomist, who is well versed in in conventional and organic farming. He can answer all their questions, and we can get off to the races and helping them save save a lot of money and uh, do some great things. And so that's the thing is a. I've likened this to when I was back in the early days of mixed martial arts, the politicians, the boxing commissions, everybody was after us trying to shut us down. And I was doing televised debates with politicians constantly saying, this is not Barbary. This, there is massive amounts of endurance, strength training, 
years and years and years of knowledge that needs to be gained. This is a sport. Yes, it's a rough sport, but it is a beneficial sport. Uh, we were treated like, well, redheaded stepchildren, so to speak, in the sports world. But here's what, here's what came of it is now United States law enforcement, um, cutting edge, uh, tip of the spear, you know, our, our special forces use this stuff, you know, in hands-on, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat. You know, this, this stuff has changed the world, really. And now, after years of teaching people how to defend themselves, I'm teaching you how to defend yourself, I hope, in a much better way, uh, where we can keep our children healthy, improve our soil health, improve our crops, improve our food, and just uh, allow people to live the life that they were meant to live, right? Amen. So, Amen. Well, Pat, thank you, thank you, thank you. We really, really do appreciate it. Okay, thank you, man. You guys have an awesome and blessed day. Soilsavior.com. Go check it out. ASAP, folks.